you I need a hit to take it far, make moves Like somebody trying to take it down, place for You try to score in mine, smash the bar all right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watches coming in to January 23rd, and we got a lot to talk about. I want to go over one of the plays I made today. It's low probability. I also even have another lotto play we're going to go over for this week. But the play was $200 risk for a $15,000 reward. I'm going to go over that play with you guys, share that with you. Then also talk about some of the other plays we're looking at and the plays I've set up. And then also a update of today and how we're even going to move forward here for the rest of the month even coming with earnings. We're wrapping up January. You got a lot of different companies reporting. So now we're at a critical stage with what the market's throwing at us with some of the different events and market risk, even over the last couple weeks. But now mixing that into earnings. And then this week, we're wrapping up this first week of earnings. It's kind of getting a little slow. So this is an interesting time to take advantage of stuff. And I'm going to share that with you based on some of the moves we made. So I got that for you. I got the keys, all that, but let's get into it. But you guys know what you need to do. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you subscribe. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. It is the first link in the description and it is pinned in the comments. It is free 99 to join. All you got to do is show up, be positive and respectful. That's all we ask. Source that information. And I said it today. Let's get some new eyes out there. You may think I don't know enough. I'm new. Just call stuff out. Out. You have not been tainted by as many YOLO demons and all that, so you could see through some stuff traders of all experience levels might overlook, so let's go. I guess that leads to the most important thing you need to do. Post your watches below, let us know what you're looking at, post those plays, the earnings plays, everything, source that information, and okay, okay, okay. You guys get it. Let's get let's get right into it. So the first thing before we get into plays, I want to talk about earnings and moving in packs. You're going to get a lot of that here, and this is what we need to take advantage here coming for this week alone and as well as every week after that when you start you'll notice how companies are both industry wise they will start reporting at the same time now we're getting the chip makers you saw texas instruments we're gonna get intel tomorrow you're gonna you're already seeing them move and how they're even setting up into all this so take full advantage of that but also understand too some companies are gonna get more of a moves and they're gonna more react more to some of the earnings reports while at the same time some stocks might chill this is where you start to see that rotation so just keep this in mind as far as what to look for there's a few different things now even coming off of this this coronavirus the one from China and not there's something I guess going around with Corona's too I don't know it is still a market risk it has developed and this is going to get important we talked about in the video yesterday you could check that up if you missed it kind of get up to date with that but we are going to be talking about this I think it's important again the scale it's already spreading we got more numbers on that today so that is still on the table the markets did start to react pretty much negatively after the World Health Organization today they said they're going to wait before they designate it or call it uh, international emergency but the whole city of where it started in Wuhan, they've fully like quarantined that off and they've made it where you cannot come in or out travel anything so we will see but this is still very 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 important so there's that then don't forget about iran it's a market risk but now it's not as heavy as a risk i would say as the virus at this point people have kind of pushed it to the side we haven't seen any escalation like we've been seeing with that but that could still surprise and then there's also the impeachment going on right now it is less risk even than the iran situation i would say but if there was a surprise with the impeachment, it would probably have more of an impact than both of these combined. So again, we have to see, but now putting this all in together, you know, and again, I'm trying to show you guys and even talking about this in general, these are really what I'm just watching out for in these next few days. It doesn't mean everything's negative, but because otherwise these are the things in the market risk that could bring the market down. Otherwise the market is pretty much going to move with earnings. However, the earnings do, you're going to see the market pretty much edge up or it'll stay steady until certain companies report. The market's starts to feel a different way about the guidance and all that. So other than that, we're, we're just paying attention to what risk could kind of throw us off that course. So finally, that last one could be all of these kind of coming together in their own way. And then we get more foreign risk or even the liquidity issues and then bad earnings. That is what becomes the risk or the swan. So I did say towards end of January, beginning of February, I was expecting a downturn if this was going to kind of mimic that 2017, 2018 thing, which I suspected resembled that run up we've already had. So I'm still keeping my eyes out on the table for that. So we'll go over the play that I that I made here. But in general, even for the rest of this week and today, I have two different strategies. Watch out for the chip makers in general. Again, all these companies reporting. We did make a play with that Intel. Then we moved into the NVIDIA. But in general, these are going to create their own little window and gap we could take advantage of here and then watch for the next pack of stocks. And then after that, though, the chips are probably going to take a break. 
So again, we're seeing the chip makers move, then it's going to go to the next cycle of earnings, and then the chip makers are pretty much going to take a break, do their thing, and then we go from there. So we haven't got to see it yet, but continuation, and that's again, another thing I want to look out for even with Netflix. But then also for the end of this week, if we see a certain type of rotation, I have a play there that I'm going to be looking at, we could take advantage of some credit spreads on Friday. We missed out. We, we pretty much had a 50-50, you know, or even like I, I think 30-60, 30% right on the last three credit spreads we made on Friday. We only won the AMD, then we lost the HD, and then we lost the Abivi, but the Abivi wasn't as big of a loss, but still. But I have one again, just with kind of how things are looking. But let us get into the plays. <laughs> And shout out to Colt, baby. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for being in the chat, holding it down, positive, respectful. Be smart with this, and hopefully you guys understand options for your children. Make sure you can lose all the money financial investment. Please consult financial assets for digital purpose only. But this is the first play I'm going to talk about here. It is a play on the spiral. Before I even show it to you, understand this trade has less than a 1% probability of hitting. It's very, very extreme. I got this to get a little bit of exposure. And again, I've been saying it. I am expecting some sort of downturn in, in, in within this next 30 days, pretty much, or something. Not Again, not a serious downturn, but more of a correction of some sort. Or again, we're going to see how the market stops going up all the time, damn time. But this play is a little bit out there, but I like the risk to reward. I will even caution you. You can't go with this play. It's, it is a YOLO. Again, I don't recommend it. This is just what I'm doing. But you have to ask yourself is it worth it playing a 30-day play or should you just go buy 10 shares of snapchat mm, decisions decisions but this is this play essentially it's a 200 dollars risk again i say did i say it was less than one percent probability just if not i hope even if i did help you leave hear that again but it's 200 dollars risk for 15,000 max reward and it is a debit spread so you would need to get it to the bottom end of that spectrum or the one contract that you sold and essentially that calculation comes out to it needs to drop 12 percent in 30 days so by February 21st, here is the play. It is buy 50, 292 puts and then sell 50 of the 289. So if it gets to 289, you'll get $3 per contract on 50. That's 15,000 right there. Not too bad. Net debit was four cents. So again, if you kind of want to even see this metric here, stock started to drop there after hours. So let's do that metric here though. So it would pretty much be the price of the SPY, 330.84 minus now we need it to go to 289. That's the put that we sold. That is a $41 move on the S&P 500. So now divide 40 dollars by the current price of 330.84 and you are left with 0.126 12 percent that is the essentially the move that needs to happen in 30 days if that happens every 200 dollars will pay you 15 thousand dollars so again best part is depending on what happens i mean i'm gonna throw this in there i could have gone a lot smaller but i thought 200 wasn't bad and that way it would even deter me from making any other smaller plays if there was any volatility so i don't go chasing certain stuff but I thought it was worth it. And again, just as an overall broader insurance too for certain size portfolios, this is nice to have, but be cautious with this. This isn't a play really for everybody. So be careful on that. There's that play we made and then we made a NVIDIA play. So there's one thing I want to talk about with this before even I go there, we will talk about the Intels. So remember we bought these yesterday uh, when we called these out yesterday, said we bought them for like what? We got them pretty high. We got them at 42 cents. And remember, I bought three of these. I tried to put 100 bucks in, and this was the plan coming into earnings. Again, we've been talking about Intel. Remember, we called them out on that Friday, and then they, they started shooting up, but it kept going up. It's getting the volatility for earnings. That's tomorrow. But we bought three of these at 42 cents. They went to 88. I cut them out at like 86 or 85 cents. I sold two of them today. They pretty much went up 100%. So we bought three of them for like 100 and like 42 or 152 dollars or something like that and sold out two of them for like 170. So I bought three of them got one and I'm able to pretty much hold this in earnings. I got that play for free and we're just holding that on Intel. So that's how I played it. But again, this is kind of playing into now how you could flip some of these contracts coming into earnings as people in the premium rushes towards it. But be careful. Like this often happens with Amazon and other ones. If it runs up too much, you can buy the contract. It doesn't always have to run up into earnings. And actually, sometimes it'll do the reverse. So again, it all depends on what the underlying stock does. But it's kind of early here in the season, depending on the company. You could kind of start to see when it gets to rush in there. So be cautious. It's not going to happen every time. But that's that's what helped lead me to take the next play that I did on NVIDIA. So I sold out of the Intel, made those free. So now I have one free contract worth $80 in Intel. We got our initial investment back. So now I pretty much rolled that into the next play. And then I did NVIDIA. So I made two plays 
We did one right in the morning. I got the 300 call for like 37 cents. It barely went up, you know, went almost to 50 cents at one point through the day. But I bought this in the morning, you know, think about it. I got to throw my hand in the cookie jar. I got to scale in with that 37 bucks. But then at close, and I bought it right at close after I, I pretty much I sold the Intel, made the Intel free. And then right away I went and bought this. You could even go to the live stream and check out the recap towards the end. But then I pretty much figured for two reasons now. I was like, well, AMD kind of broke out. All those stocks broke out. NVIDIA didn't have too big of a breakout. You know, stock NVIDIA can move a lot and pretty much it only moved like it's like 12 bucks. I mean, I guess maybe I just, I'm just expecting more off of their breakout, but they could do good. They have their earnings. This play covers earnings. But my logic is they're going to get a earnings run up and they could benefit from that. Their earnings is a little later. So keep that in mind. This will have time to chill. But now. It totally didn't click for me for a second, but I forgot Tesla and NVIDIA. They've had a correlation. I remember back in the day they used to run up. So I don't know. Maybe that hype might come back around now where people start putting two and two together with NVIDIA and Tesla. If that starts going around, people might get crazy. So that's a little sprinkle uh, on top of that. But what I did now... After getting the first one in the morning, I was able to determine by the end of the day to see if there really was premium. There wasn't because my contract I bought for 37 cents, it went up like eight, nine percent, not too much. So that means these didn't really go up as much as well. And I wanted to get a lot of contracts. So again, I could sell them out for free if they do get a benefit or we could do a nice ghetto spread with it. But I bought the 305 and I bought 10 of these. So I spent 280 bucks. I bought them 10 at 28 cents. So I made these at close. These will probably be the same price in the morning. They might even go down. And again, I'm using that to scale in. And that's the beauty. That's why I went a little bigger. We got to roll over the profits from Intel. This is going to cover earnings, but there's so much time till it's earnings. I could scale in here. And then again, I, I think NVIDIA would be one I would want to play pretty big for earnings considering they have had a pretty consistent chart and haven't had big earnings run-ups or breakouts when in the past they, they used to move, you know, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, whatever you want to call it. They can move a lot. So there was that play. And then finally, Finally, we did the VFC. Uh, this was for earnings. Again, they're going to report, I believe, tomorrow morning. I, it met the criteria like barely. I just didn't really like it too much, but it was very attractive in pricing. So what I mean by that was that the option chain, it was cheap enough for me to play both ways. And it still like fell within a reasonable opportunity or a reasonable move that VFC could have hit pretty much. The market was pricing in a 5% move. But if you pretty much got a 10% move, you could have, we, we bought that, the 83 and a half put in the 105 calls. Those were about 10%, $10 away instead of a $5 move on the stock. And you were able to get both sides for under 50 bucks within a standard deviation and a half. I was like, well, we could play both ways for 50 bucks. And the fact that it has moved in two of the last four earnings more than 10%, I was like, we, we could take it. But traditionally, they don't move too much. So we'll see. But I like that both of these plays were like 42 bucks, I think, combined. So and I even said that. Keep that in mind. You know, we spent a little bit amount of money on it. That should pretty much let you know kind of how we feel towards it. And then that even explains the final play, my friends. Here is your lotto play. So again, one thing too about this, I'm probably going to play this next week. So if we're wrong this week, I'm going to try to find one of these even for a similar price. Just because I remember two, three weeks ago, we called those out. They, they did. They went crazy there at eight cents. So it's UNH. Uh, again, they've been they've been dropping. They kind of got massacred in the morning, bounced back up, but they're at a good spot. I really, really like them here. Again, I'm just waiting for them to actually get one of these bigger dollar moves of, as they've had towards these breakout points. But we got for expiring Friday a 310 for uh, I think I paid seven bucks for them. So there's seven to nine now. There's a widespread. Again, these are going to be worthless. Again, they could change really fast in the morning or just now if. UNH stays the same or even drops uh, a few dollars. The goal would be these 307s for about seven cents. So if you wait, you could probably get a, a close, way closer to the money for more. But all we're pretty much banking on is if there is a UNH breakout. If not, I am going to just get even some more time and I'll play it next week and we'll see what we could get for eight cents or even cheaper. But I really, really like the UNH. But again, it's a lot of play. That, that one's a 5% probability of profit, a little better than the spies. So that should tell you something about both plays. But as far as everything else, you can watch those. Actually, this was for the long-term portfolio, or this was on the, the real estate guys. Remember, they bought this, but I was looking at real. I think they got earnings coming up. I might even make a put play on them. They're really, really illiquid chain. But watch them. Again, watch the video. Watch Intel tomorrow. Watch Texas Instruments. Oh, I forgot. We actually, we played that today. Or from the other play, the calls we had went up in the puts, but they actually... 
I mean, I said we could, we could have we should, that, that there was a decent condor on it, but it was like a 50 50 ratio. But Texas Instruments, even though they beat, they are really, really known to have big continuations, or at least that's what we saw a lot last year. So watch out for the follow up move again. And what's going to influence that and what we could watch out for is Intel. So watch both of those tomorrow, even watch VFC. And then I want to keep my eye on Netflix. They, they, Kept selling off today now. They fell outside of that iron condor range. So that's interesting. There might be, you could even play this for one of those Friday condors. Or if you want to try to play a, a, you know, a credit spread type play that expires. Or even if there is a continuation, either if it goes down or if they do bounce. But Netflix could start to move. So don't forget about that then. Tesla was insane today. Hit 593, about to go to 600. This is one I kind of want to look for towards the weeklies. I want to see if we can finesse it. I am wanting to get puts on it uh, right before their earnings. So I'm going to keep my eye out for that because, again, surprisingly, the calls are more expensive than the puts, which is very, very surprising in this case. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on for that. Then watch UNH, like we said. But then don't forget BA. These plays were weird. They, they had news again. They said that they're going to keep building the 737 MAX or start building it before the return to service date. So I guess that's taken as if they, they said it was only a pilot issue, but it looks like a lot of confidence from BA. But stock went up, shot down. It's going to be a mess. Again, this is probably going to drag on another Boeing cuckening. We had a, another opportunity to ghetto spread those contracts contracts from yesterday. Remember, they lost their value. They came back to where we paid for them yesterday. Then they the stock dropped and then they came up in value today. You could have ghetto spread them. I didn't, but we're going to see that. It, Boeing's going to be a messed up one. I think UNH on the downside, honestly. You know, we're just waiting for that to kind of crack and have that move. We kind of did catch it. Same thing with UNH. And then watch AMD. That one play we have expiring this week. I think that one's down now. Yeah, it's only down 15%. But remember, we were up like 50% on that earlier. Earlier, I didn't get to spread that one, but I'm going to keep my eye out for there. And again, with all the chip makers and Qualcomm. Remember, this is one I'm looking for double dipping. The contracts dropped a lot today. They probably could be a little bit more cheaper. They're still elevated from the first time we called them out so i'm kind of waiting for that to come down a little bit but i like the qualcomm then watch snapchat they broke 1950 today again just the trajectory of this this is that, that, you know our long-term stock but it's getting pretty interesting again their earnings is what uh, february 3rd or february 4th so it's right around the corner and then watch hd they hit 235, 236 today, which is actually crazy when you guys pull it up on the daily chart here. But they dropped down to 231. This would be an awesome daily credit spread. So if they start moving big like this and they start falling out and you get kind of a weird rotation, I kind of might want to go after one of the high credit, low collateral type plays on this. I know we got killed on them last time, but I, I, I do like HD for the just for the opportunity of what it could do there. All we just got to make sure is that there's no X dividend and then watch TLT. They went up a lot today. Surprisingly, at one point they were even dropping with the market, but you could see how they kind of leveled up. But this thing is creeping up. This thing is getting important. Again, all those different risks on the table. You're seeing how people and investors are reacting to, to just everything through bonds. Then finally, watch Roku as well as Shopify. Uh, again, this is, thank God we sold that contract from earlier. You guys are seeing, but now might be a good time to double dip on Shopify if they come up. They're interesting on the continuation up, but as far as Roku now, I kind of might like them for puts. Remember, if they anytime they've really fell below 130, it's, it's gotten pretty ugly here, and I, I need to check their earnings date, but that could be a decent one, especially even if the market sells off, or again, if we just see a certain type of rotation after earnings. So watch them, and then watch Beyond. They dropped after hours. They had a, they, they had a stellar morning, and then they came back again. This is almost looking like a carbon copy of last week in a, in a really, really weird way. So We'll see what happens. It might probably hang up in a wider range here due to the earnings next week, but we'll see. We still have those plays. They're still up on Beyond, literally still up 50%, so not the same 300%. But as people said, should we triple dip once those get cheaper? So once we go down on those plays, if, if, if they go down before earnings, that would be the opportunity. Otherwise, we just ride it out there. So there's that. And then finally, Abivi, uh, I believe some people thought they have earnings. I think it's Abbott, uh, their parent company that has earnings. But I am worried if they start to drop here. I want to see. I'm going to keep my eye on for them again, just with even some of the bigger long terms we've been holding. And well, that's pretty much your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you're hydrated, healthy, ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I mean, need to make sure you guys are all focused. It's earnings time, baby. I need you to flip the switch. I need you to get hype. I need you to not tell me about fair. Tell me about finishing, set a goal. And I said this, I said this, I can't say it enough. You need to get endurance, baby. Whatever amount you have now. I said this for the OGs at the end of the day, but I'm going to give it to you right here if you made it this far in the watch list. Whatever amount you have now, whether it's 100, 
hundred dollars, two hundred, four hundred. It doesn't matter. You need to make that money survive for the next four to six weeks. We are going to have an opportunity between there. There's going to be a crazy move. I would doubt it if we didn't see one at the first quarter here, 2020, with considering everything that's going on. So I need you to have endurance allocate the plays you want start thinking in advance be smart if you want more money you don't want to make too many plays maybe sell credit spreads in between i don't know but make sure you have the endurance baby so that's it man i'm gonna see you in the morning it's all love it's all positivity you better go spread that and don't forget the cult loves you baby let's go <laughs>